friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me adjusting my camera angles for a hot minute. This week's video is going to be me discussing six adult fantasy books that I've been wanting to read that I will be picking up in the near-ish future. So if you guys like this video, hit like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know if you guys want me to do like a follow-up on this video once I've actually read through this list. Hint. Therese, remember to read through this list, but let's just kind of get into it. You guys know the drill by now. Subscribe, comment. So I, it's been kind of a goal of mine to read more adult fantasy. Like I love YA fantasy. I have a lot of it on the shelves and on the other shelf over there in the corner, but I haven't read a lot of adult fantasy. I keep telling myself that I'm going to get into it and then I start to get into it. I start to read more adult and then like at some point, somewhere along the line, it drops off always. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. This cat acts like he's being abused and literally my door's open. He can just walk in whenever he wants to, but he doesn't want to. Okay, I am going to be reading most of the synopses on here because I have never heard of these books and as hard as I try to remember what these books mean, like their synopses, it just... So I'm going to try my hardest to like look up and read the synopses at the same time. We'll see how it goes. But the first book is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. This follows young Leo who is attending a, the uh, Montevere, uh, an exclusive academy tucked away in the mountains. The best and the brightest are trained for excellence in the Grand Jou, which is an ar arcane mysterious magical contest. Leo is once a student at this until tragedy befalls, marking him exiled and kind of like, I guess, disgraced. He returns a couple of years later where things have changed since he studied there. He meets this woman named Claire and he senses an odd connection to her as you know most men tend to do when they see a beautiful woman. Odd connections. And now both Leo and Claire have lived their lives based off of lies and with the games coming back up things and secrets are starting to pop back up. This sounds very interesting to me. It gives me almost like we were all liars kind of vibes with the concept of like coming back disgrace after a tragedy and learning all that stuff. I think to read we were liars, but neither here nor there. And like the magical aspect somehow also gives me like the magicians and then just some like some of the like pol like the weird fantastical intrigue of a book that I can't think of. It sounds super interesting. I haven't heard a ton about it. I was looking on Goodreads and I have like four friends who wanted to read it and it's on their list still so maybe I will bite the bullet in the near-ish future maybe like a book shopping spree on my birthday and pick it up and see where that goes. The next one is The Popular by R.F. Kuang. This is a historical fantasy set I believe I forget which war it was but it's following this academy of soldiers and assassins and magic and dragons. But I've heard a lot of good things about this. This has been on my list for a hot minute. And it's not so much that I don't want to read it, because I do. But when I pass by the book at Barnes & Noble, I just get this immediate sense of dread. <laughs> and I can tell if it's because of the thickness of the book, or just the things that I've heard about how great and like how much like it just destroys you. So I've just been very, I've been very hesitant. But I think this is the year. I'm going to do it in 2021 and read it for a reading vlog. And we can all, you can all relive the poppy war through my immense amount of suffering. I'm sure I, I don't think I'll be able to read that book in a week. Not gonna lie. But you know, the thought counts and the thought is there. So, hopefully, you know, I can at least make a significant dent in it. Because we all know the last time that I tried to read not one, but two dense high fantasies. One of them being... Priority of the Orange Tree, which took me three months worth of disappointments and $30 of like, why did I read this? On top of um, Crescent City, which I got sick in the middle of, so it took me like two months to read. And like, I love my thick fantasies, but like, something always happens in the middle of said fantasies that has me like stopping. Like, I started Priority of the Orange Tree like in February of 2020. Do you know, want to know what happened? In March of 2020, that could have halted my reading. I am gonna read this book. I just, I need, <laughs> I need y'all to send me some courage because if she is a, she's a pretty thick beast and it scares me. And I haven't had a chance to look at the font yet. And the font is what scares me because I can handle thick books if they're like a nice, like decent font. But like if they're like itty bitty, like Bible tiny, that's a tome. I'm reading a tome. The next book is actually by an indigenous author and that is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. 
I have heard amazing and magical things about Black Sun. Black Sun is on my TBR. I will get to it. But I also found this, and I have heard a couple of things about this already. I think a couple of my friends have reviewed it. This is following basically monster hunters in a world where the apocalypse has happened and both gods and humans roam the earth. That also has to involve humans. The um, Dinita, which is, I, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly i'm so sorry it does an accent so i'm assuming it goes up dineta this is formerly a navajo reservation has been reborn maggie hosky is a dineta monster hunter which is, is a supernaturally gifted killer when a small town finds that a young girl is missing maggie is kind of the last hope from the looks of it 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 looks like it mixes old magic with new magic in a modern world so i am super stoked for that and like I said, I heard Black Sun was amazing. It's still on my list. But Trail of Lightning also looks pretty dang good. So excited for that. This is also the first book in the Six World series. I don't know if it's a trilogy or not. All I know is when I was looking up Six World, the six it said Six World One and then Six World Two, and I was like, oh, was unaware of this fact. But here we are. The next one is A Master of, of Jin by um, the Jelly Clark. It's set in 1912 Egypt, I believe from the looks of it. The main character, Fat Fatma El Sharawi, is the youngest woman working for the Ministry of Alchemy, su enchantment supernatural entities. She prevented uh, the destruction of the universe last summer and then when someone mess uh, murders a secret brotherhood dedicated to one of the most famous men in history, she is called onto the case. This sounds super intriguing to me. I love the idea of a get, of having this kind of high fantastical situ scenario in a more modern setting. It saves me a lot of time when trying to figure out if they are able to travel by car, by horse, or by magic, or by all three. It saves me a lot of time. I'm also intrigued by the cover. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. And the fact that it's set in um, 1912 Cairo, I believe. So we do also have a beautifully amazing like POC author. And then I believe this book has queer up as well. I think the main character is in a pre-established relationship with a woman when the book starts. So we're getting a lot of interesting, fun concepts here. I want to bump this one actually to my high priority list because it seems super interesting and super fun. And I know some of my friends have already who whose reviews I trust dearly have rated it and they absolutely adore this book. So I'm gonna trust their um reviews and pick it up super soon because like I just want to hold this cover. And the last book is The Bone Shard Daughter, which is the first book in the Drowning Empire series by Andrea Stewart. I'm going to read the synopsis for y'all. This follows a mystical world where the Emperor's reign has lasted for decades, his mastery over bone shard magic powering the animal-like constru constructs that maintain law and order. But now his ruling is failing and the revolution is sweeping across the Empire's many lands. Lin is the Emperor's daughter and spends her days trapped away in a palace of locked doors and dark secrets. When her father refuses to recognize her as heir to the throne, she vows to prove her worth by mastering the forbidden art of bone shard magic. Yet such power carries a great cost, and when the revolution reaches the gates of the palace, Lin must decide how far she is willing to go to claim her birthright and save her people. I don't know why, but it's giving me snow white circa kristen stewart era like just the concept of like a daughter being locked away in a tower and having to like survive to like claim her birthright when a war is looming gives me those vibes but i believe this is set in like a more and i don't want to say a, an, an east asian i believe the um author is of asian descent i believe i don't know i haven't done too much research into it but again the cover gorgeous I absolutely adore the pre the premise of this book and the concept of bone shard magic and I want to see how that magic system does pan out. So I'll be adding this, but I'll also be bumping this one up on the list of priority books to read. So let's hope I get to it. But that is it for these six. For these six um, uh, high fantasy adult novels that I want to read in the next two years. Um, Again, some of these books are a little thicker than others. I'm expecting most of them to be thicker than others. The most I can do and hope and pray is that they have very medium sized fonts because if it is like Bible sized font with like Bible thin pages, it's a tome. It's no longer a book, it's a tome, but yeah. If you guys like this video and like I said at the beginning, want me to do like a follow up video once I finish this 
list of mine let me know in the comments but until then hopefully you guys are having a safe week hopefully you know the sun is shining where you are at and everything is going okay and if not everything's okay i think this comes out on a monday so we have some time to like you know make the week a little better for ourselves but until then i'll see you guys in my next video bye